Hello everyone, today I'm going to be reacting to uh, distortion videos. But this video is from Bob Gartner Restoration. The title of the video is called Restoration of Mother Mary Narrated. This is the narrated version. I think it's the quiet version too. I haven't seen this one, so let's watch it. So here I'm going to do another narrated walkthrough of the restoration of this painting of Mother Mary. It's not meant to be instructional or exhaustive, just to give you guys an idea of what I'm doing. Uh, this painting was pretty damaged. It had been exposed to moisture, which resulted in a lot of flaking. There were punctures and tears. Uh, the painting was quite dirty, uh, and there was an old varnish on it. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of paint missing, which also needed to be addressed. So the first step is to remove the painting from the stretcher, and I'm using an upholsterer's tack pulling tool to remove these nails. Uh, I just need to get it off the stretcher so that I can start working on it, um, but I want to preserve the tacking edge uh, okay. as much as I can. Uh, the next step is to clean the back, and this is just to get rid of the dust, dirt, and grime that's yeah. trapped in between the stretcher bar and the canvas. With all the dirt. Um, the next step in the conservation process is to repair the tears, and what I'm going to be doing is something called bridging. And that's where I take uh, little strands of Belgian, I was just cutting them off, and a conservation adhesive, and I will lay these strands perpendicularly across the tear. Uh, the reason that I do this is to provide some stability to the tear so that it doesn't move, uh, to provide a nice foundation. It looks like a lot of work. The fill-in medium, which will replace the missing pigment, and generally just to hold the tear together. Uh, so it's slow going, and after the strands are laid down, I have to make sure that they're uh, fully saturated and adhesive, and then I can press them. And I'm going to use a piece of silicone release film and a pad of felt. Uh, the release film makes sure that nothing sticks, and the felt is just a cushion and then a steel weight. Next, I'm going to be cutting off pieces of Belgian linen for the strip lining, and that will go on the new tacking edge. I'm going to fray the edges of this linen so that the edge doesn't impart upon the face of the painting. If I don't do that, the crisp edge of the new linen can sometimes show through on the face of the painting. Now here I'm using a conservation adhesive film. It's iron-on, and then I'm ironing on the yeah. new piece of Belgian linen. And as I go, I use a weight to make sure that uh, it uh, dries flat. Um, cutting off the excess, and there you go. The whole thing has been strip-lined. Um, in this yeah, step, I'm going to start kid. cleaning the painting. And the first step is to remove the surface grime. So I'm using a paste that I mix uh, to loosen up and remove the accumulated surface grime. And that's dust, dirt, oils, just grime that's sitting on the surface of the painting. And I have to remove this stuff first before I can get to the varnish layer because that layer of surface grime prevents the solvents from penetrating through and softening up the varnish. If I were to just try using solvents, it would be ineffective and then I would probably go to a more aggressive solvent and eventually do damage to the painting. So I'm making my own large swabs because cleaning paintings was not effective. And here I will start to remove the surface grime and the old varnish. And you can see it start to come up. I hope you don't ruin the case of Mother Mary. There. I work slowly and I work in uh, isolated sections because I like to keep control of what I'm doing. Uh, here, working on the metallic uh, letters, I'm using uh, Q-tips because I want to just focus on those letters. Now here I'm squaring up the stretcher. I need to make sure that it's square before I stretch the painting to it. These little nails are going to make sure that as I'm handling the stretcher, it doesn't flex or, deter or distort and become a uh, parallelogram. So painting gets laid down onto the stretcher, and then I will use uh, steel upholstery tacks to secure it to the stretcher. I use a magnetic hammer and steel tacks. I prefer them over staples for a lot of reasons. I think they're superior. Uh, some people will debate that with me, but it's like ton of equipment to fix the painting. But uh, this is my studio, so I get to decide on the rules. Uh, I like to put the tacks in about an inch to an inch and a quarter apart. I feel that like gives good coverage without overstressing the tacking edge or the stretcher. Um, sometimes I'll use a pulling plier to add tension, but in this case I don't want to, so I'm just using my hands. Uh, and I can add pretty good tension with just my fingers. I'm going to clean up the corners and fold over the new Belgian linen and secure it with smaller tacks. Um, I prefer this as to 
as opposed to staples or glue. I think it looks nicer and it's easier to remove in the future. I'll clean up the corners again, just making it nice and tidy. And uh, then the next step is going to be cutting new keys for the stretcher. Now these little wooden wedges are keys and what they will allow me to do is add tension to the stretcher. Because the stretcher's joints are not glued together, I can insert this key and tap it with the hammer and slowly expand that joint. And if I expand it's like a lot of work. I could never do that. all four joints, I can enlarge the stretcher and add tension. Here I'm using fishing line and attack to secure the key so that it doesn't get lost. Uh, if that key falls out and falls in between the painting and the stretcher bar, it will create a bulge and there's no reason why that should ever be lost. Uh, here I'm using a putty to fill in wherever there was missing pigment. Uh, this is necessary because if I don't fill this in and just go ahead and retouch it, you'll see that as a, uh, an indented area and it just won't look right. I'm removing the excess. All I want is where the missing pigment is to be filled in. And now comes the retouching process. And this is uh, the long and slow and time consuming, tedious Jeez. work of oh, putting goodness. the painting back together. And here I'm using a conservation pigment and a medium. And uh, I'm just going to mix my colors and slowly add them to the painting where the color is missing. You'll notice I'm using a very, very small brush. Uh, and I'm going very slowly, and I'm just adding pigment where pigment was lost. As a conservator, it's my job to restore the painting to how the artist envisioned it. And I would be really stressed about painting this. Not to make editorial decisions, so it's inappropriate for me to glaze in large areas or to add medium where there already is medium. Uh, this is, again, I said it's just slow going and uh, methodical and some days I have to wipe it all off and start over because the light wasn't right Jeez. or because I'm not satisfied with the retouching but the good thing about using archival and reversible pigments is that I can remove my retouching without damaging the artwork uh, and then finally uh, I will varnish the painting and here I'm mixing uh, the varnish a combination of matte and gloss varnish with a UV stabilizer that will prevent the varnish from yellowing. Uh, and I'm going to brush it on the painting. Generally, that, I prefer looks to brush like my varnish milk. as opposed to spray it. Sometimes I do spray, but in this case, uh, brush is fine. It gives me a little bit more control um, and I just prefer it. There's no right or wrong way to add varnish uh, other than to go evenly, methodically, and to keep in mind that yeah. It should be really satisfying though. You can always add more varnish when the painting's wet, but removing varnish, if you put too much on, is much more difficult. So, once the painting is varnished, uh, it is all complete, and you can see the final product here. So the clients were really happy with this. I was really happy with it. Um, the painting is yeah. now stable and sound and uh, will be good really to go good. for the next 150 years. All the work that I've done is archival, so none of it will damage the painting and it's fully reversible. So if in the future, another conservator decides to- That's at least put great job, great job on the restoration. Take my work off and give it a go. Uh, it should be pretty easy for them. So. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed That's a really good video. I really enjoyed it. Okay, guys, I'm going to end the video there. Make sure you like and subscribe and hit that bell notification so you won't miss any uploads. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.